Hey, yo, what's up? This is me, it's Mark, with the Digital Liberation Live podcast. Um, I'm really excited to talk to one of the organizers of the Freedom Arts Movement. This whole interview is super interesting because we get into so much stuff. You know, we get kicked off with this beautiful, amazing poem. And then we start talking about everything from like real life, like live, like like real fucking time activism that's happening in New York right now, you know, with with like with like building tenants striking on like rent to everything from like what what art is going to look like in the future not look like in the sense of like like the actual pieces but like what it's going to mean right like what 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 is going to mean to 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 not have art that's commodified anymore because how the fuck are we going to go back to commodifying art after we we've been through this shit that we're dealing with right now doesn't make sense right and that's what we get into in this in this whole episode here. So I think the Freedom Arts Movement, make sure to follow them. Of course, make sure to follow us at Felzine, all that other shit. You, you know, this is not a time to get into that bullshit. This is not a time for, yo, follow me here, subscribe to this, rate us. Fuck all that. Fuck all that. This this is this, this can't be like this no more, right? So here we go, yo. We're bringing you real content. We're real ass niggas right now. We're talking about real shit. And thank you for being here. And you know, I I just I'm I'm glad and I'm honored if you're listening to this to be a part of your relief during these times. So, um, you know, I love you, and I hope that you're healthy. I hope that you're safe. This is a time for community. This is a time for building and this interview is so much about community is so much about building so sit back kick back listen to this poem first it's a beautiful piece that's created by you know one of the lead organizers of the freedom arts movement and um you know after that listen to what we get into and dig into it and i would love to hear your thoughts hit us up if you have any questions um you know any resources that you may need just check out the description and we're here for you and uh I hope you enjoy. Peace. So this is a poem I wrote uh, in response and in conversation uh, with uh, recent efforts of me and comrades uh, to organize my building of 400 people uh, in order to collectively engage in a rent strike on April 1st. It's called, If I Were a Landlord, I Would Be Scared. I would spend half my time worrying about all the tenants at their leisure, perusing the heretofore benign Facebook group they made that is now overrun by communists posting memes at extraordinary frequency. The other half, I would be living in a daydream, forging imagined forks in my path, passing on lifestyles guaranteed only on the sweat-scolded backs of people who work and who hold grudges. Another existence, perhaps, if I didn't lean into stolen land and made boss by social reproduction, or maybe if I could freeze time and stay below the age needed to administer the privilege of my lineage of wallets. The fact is that some people are born into businesses, not families. Businesses with gears that turn and are greased with stolen value. Another fact, landlords can't subsist on our blood forever. Renters are either sucked dry of their paycheck or they become fully cognizant of the parasite in the arrangement. Bloodletting reached its peak in the 19th century. We collectively figured out that losing yourself in order to sustain yourself doesn't make sense, nor does it cure what ails us. I mean it when I say that class is a hereditary disease. You need to make sure history doesn't resolve itself without your input. Decide how you want to live through the next disaster. Don't let the current bring you down. Move upstream against the strong force. Know this, it is possible to overcome, and the leech, as Mao teaches us, can be squashed. I'm snapping over here. That was fire. I love it. Hell yeah, baby. I love it. I love it. Ask more. So... So, um, so, t- so that was it, right? That's the end of it, right? I hope I, I, that I is just, the end of it. The, oh, got, the real end you. of it is the real end of it is when my landlord's uh, head is in the guillotine, but <laughs> that will come, that will come later, dude. I, I, okay, so, 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 so I, I have like, I, I just have so many questions following that. So, can you tell me about, um, you know, the, 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 you know, I, I'll just say, I guess I'll say it like this. Can you tell me about the political action um, that you took that even inspired um, this poem? 
Okay. Um, yeah. So it's actually a funny story. I've been trying to organize my building for a while now. People are pretty atomized. A lot of people have different work hours and schedules and stuff. Anytime someone puts up a flyer in like a common area, it usually gets taken down pretty quickly. It's, it's really weird. I mean, obviously management's not trying to have a tenants organization on their hands, but, um, yeah. So I, I, you know, I've been struggling just talking to people on my floor or whatnot. And then yesterday I, I contacted one of my neighbors because I'm out of town right now, um, Mm -hmm. with my partner's family taking care of, of stuff around there. Um, and I asked them like, you know, if they saw any information about, uh, about the upcoming rent that's due, they told me that unsurprisingly, the landlords are trying to entice people to pay early with a fifty dollar discount if they pay a week early, which is fucking hilarious. <laughs> like, yeah, the smallest amount of crumbs. Um, and so I was like, oh shit! And she's like, yeah, it's it's in the Facebook group. I was like, what? I was like, what Facebook group? She's like, yeah, we have a tenants Facebook group. I was like, oh my god! And I was like, just like perfectly set up the the like the building blocks for a tenants union. I just like instantly posted in there. I was like, yo, you guys realize that like you're like two steps away from a tenants union. And then so I just started pushing a lot of like revolutionary rhetoric in there. Um, and then the 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 like so called de facto leader who's just like this weird liberal that started the group. Uh, kind of got overwhelmed and was just like, okay, like, do you want to take this over and like start the union? I was like, yes, I will definitely do that. Uh, so we set up a Zoom call. Um, there's one coming up this Sunday with all 400 of us, and uh, we're going to talk about our demands. We're going to kind of just reach a consensus, uh, kind of like assuage any any nerves people have, or you know, just go over like the legal logistics of it. Um, like, you know, you can't be punished for being in a renter's union. Um, but, you know, we're not just going to just gonna uh, withhold our rent. We're going to, you know, send them a letter first telling them if they don't meet our demands that that's what we'll do. Um, and stuff like that, we'll, that's what we'll be talking about on Sunday. But, you know, we've come to a consensus already, and it seems like very likely that we'll be striking uh, April 1st. And, you know... 400 pe- the the building i live in is fucking huge um yeah. it's it's new york city it used to be an old shoe factory and they're just like shoving people in there uh so yeah so 400 people it's a lot of money that they're gonna lose um and we've had just you know our building's a piece of shit and so we've been demanding like pretty pretty reasonable things for a long time like fixing locks on doors because packages are getting stolen and they just haven't done it so uh not only will we be striking for you know this but also just like organizing just like a basic uh a basic uh, place of of pretty much where all your social life happens is like you know you need that so organizing around that is, is super important so we can not only get a rent uh rent freeze but also just like get shit that we deserve and accommodations that are being denied to us and stuff like that. That's awesome. I mean, you know, like, like this, um, th- this sounds like you, you're really, um, I-, I think, you know, for me, I mean, when I hear this, I'm like, wow, like that, that's such a powerful action that, that you took. Are you someone who's been just kind of like, um, like always politically active like this, or is this kind of like one of the, one of the bigger projects you've taken on, um, so far? And like, um, you know, if you, if you've been doing things like this for a while, do do you kind of remember like where your, where your own kind of like, you know, political awakening happening, happened in this way? Hmm. Um, definitely. I don't think anyone's born a revolutionary or anything like that, or like an organizer. I mean, some people, I guess are born into families of organizers and in that build. I mean, in that poem I just read, it's like, you know, some people are born into businesses and not families. Like, so like I was born into a pretty liberal kind of like apolitical. We didn't really talk about politics and such. My mom was uh, more radical than my dad for sure. Um, she would like, she had like Asada on the, on the mantle, but we didn't, we didn't really talk politics or anything like that. Um, I think like, what really got me into politics was listening to like rap music and watching movies. Um, just like just little references here and there. Like whenever Tupac would like shout out a black Panther, I would like look it up and be like, Oh, this is dope. But it really, it never really, 
it was like out of the realm of possibility for me. I think that as it is for a lot of people until they get to like see it happening, it's like you see struggle and you see violence and you see state repression and stuff, but you never really see like the wins of organizers and grassroots movements like on the ground, uh, like in the media or like anywhere really. Um, so I think, yeah, social media definitely changed that a lot. Um, growing up through that age of like social media and shit, it's like starting, starting to follow people and then getting, uh, those connections made for me on like the timeline and shit that really helped. Uh, I would say like in my early twenties, I mean, I'm still in my early twenties, but like when I was like 20, I, mm. I started organizing, uh, at uh uc santa cruz i didn't go to uc santa cruz i went to a community college but all my friends with uc santa cruz and so they organize uh, uh what's it called an occupation of one of the humanities buildings uh to protest like i think it was i think it was tuition increases and it was happening all over the state and like tons of radicals and revolutionaries were occupying these different buildings of all the ucs uh, Cornell West came, he shook hands with us, uh, fucking who else came? I don't know, but it was just like a big event, a l- tons of stuff going on. Uh, we did not get our demands met. We got shut down. The police came and kicked us all out. We were there for a week, but, oh, um, man. but, um, yeah, so it was actually a really demoralizing effort. And then also in the midst of that, um, who was it? damn i can't even remember it was the officer who killed mike brown what's that fucking dickhead's name oh yeah i know who you're talking about i can't remember his name fuck his name no yeah, problem. Fuck, fuck him <laughs> exactly yeah fuck that guy um, yeah. but yeah he got acquitted during our occupation so dude everyone was just crushed like Shit. we were all like hyped up and then that news came around and everyone was just silent and like then the day after we got i think it was i think it was the day after we got raided by the cops and then yeah, I mean that's a horrible story and it's a horrible first start into organizing. <laughs> yeah. But it's like it's like that's really what like opened up the realm of possibilities. Like we were doing like workshops and teach-ins led by like different people in the occupation like all these things that I didn't think were possible, uh like direct action and just like self determination, self-management, collective control, like all of it was happening in front of my eyes and it's just like it just made so many connections. And I think that's happening for a lot of people right now. Um, It's just like, it's like, it's just in the mainstream lexicon, like organizing grassroots movement, fucking teen Vogue, writing articles about the rent strike. It's like, it's out there and like people can connect to it very easily. It's not just this fringe idea anymore. Um, yeah. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. I mean, you know, um, for me, it's interesting because I think that like the the silver lining and all of this like pandemic and, you know, just like the, the global tragedy that we're going through now with COVID-19, like the silver lining is that I think people are, are being reminded of the power of like community and organizing again. Yep. And like, you know, like, I don't know, I mean, may, maybe your building is different, but like the, the things that I've seen people come together to do in the last couple of weeks it would have been impossible to get them to do like in the middle of February, yeah, you know? especially like, at the, at uh, the level of, uh, efficient efficiency and just like the, the intensity that's happening right now, like all these mutual aid programs, like they've existed for mm-hmm. sure existed for a long time. It's just that, like I was saying before, the visibility was very low. Um, and, and during this heightened time of precarity and stuff, people are obviously looking outside, of the system for solutions. Like I, I have a friend who, who's just on, uh, the federal website to, to apply for unemployment. And then they got redirected and they were like, Oh, we can't process it online. You got to call. And then they called, they got a, they got a machine. It was like, we can't process it. You got to go online. And so it was just like shuffling him back and forth. And he's like, okay, guess I'm not getting unemployment, uh, that way. So like, obviously like the system is exposing itself and, uh, all these different systems that have been created, a long time ago to support people um, and challenge kind of like uh, challenge the legitimacy of, of the system are being uh, being upheld right now. So it's super good. And yeah, you hit it nail on the head that like it definitely, the, this level of intensity that people are organizing was definitely not there before. 
But so so this happens, you know, in all times of crisis and war and stuff like that. Yeah, no, no, it's it, it's so real. Well, you know, I mean, one of one of the things is, um, you know, with your with your handle, you know, being like, you know, Freedom Arts Movement and, you know, one of the the, the main reason um, why we really wanted to have this conversation is to to also talk about that. Right. Exactly. Like the Freedom Arts Movement, um, the Black Arts Movement, you know, the, the different terms that people use to kind of refer to it. And and I kind of feel like in a lot of ways that um this this time that that we're living in now, like these are the type of things that like all of the artists, like people like Amiri Baraka, were were actually kind of Hell like yeah. warning us about, you know. So so can you for us, Hell you yeah. know, um I, I think you're you're probably like the the best person I know that can do this. So, you know, for the listeners that that might not know what the movement is, do you mind giving us just like an overview word. of of the movement? Word, word. Um, I'm not necessarily like a scholar on the black arts movement. Um, so so I mean I can I can def I know about it, but um and obviously that's where the freedom arts movement draws a ton of its inspiration from. Um, I mean, I'll just go over what the freedom arts movement is first as like a primer and then kind of where we draw our influence from uh, the black arts movement. So the freedom arts movement is a collective of artists. It's a, well, it's a grassroots organization that's led by artists, but our idea that we've synthesized is that uh, everyone uh, is is inherently a creator or creative or born as someone who creates things uh in our relation to uh um the systems of uh of of like social reproduction and stuff like that they have caused us uh to be denied the kind of freedoms to create without being commodified so um we're kind of forced uh, I mean, obviously, like through wage labor, but also just through anything that we create, whether we put it online, it's instantly being commodified for data capital um, and stuff like that. So literally, we, we, we are denied systems or institutions or even the, the freedom of movement to create things without the need to commodify or marketize or, or them being capitalized by people who sell and trade those things. Um, so what we seek to do is, is liberate that by uh instituting systems of dual power that can that can uh sustain people uh give them their basic needs but then also provide them with platforms with supplies with tools with the with the newfound agency to create things outside of capitalism mm -hmm. um so so you know we have a diversity of tactics around that we're we're building mutual aid programs. We're doing a free school called the free, uh, the Brooklyn freedom school that, uh, we currently had to postpone and we're moving online obviously because of the coronavirus. Um, but yeah, so we're doing that. We're teaching people, you know, things that institutions would normally teach them for hundreds of thousands of dollars, but we're doing it for free. Um, we're redistributing supplies and having repositories for supplies and literature and stuff like that. So people can gain that for free. Um, we did a supply drive, a Christmas supply drive to kind of subvert the capitalist led, uh, frenzy of buying, uh, fleeting gifts and shit like that. And so we were like trying to get people to just like create gifts or here's a gift bag of full of art supplies that you can just use for free and like, you know, mm -hmm. share with your friends and family and shit like that. Uh, but with that, you know, give them literature about who we are and what we're doing. So yeah, that's that's basically fam, and uh, I don't know. We can talk about ways you can tap in if you're in New York or a remote revolutionary or something like that. But uh, so what we basically drew from the Black Arts Movement, which was kind of, I, I would think, led by Amari Baraka. I'm, I might be wrong by saying that, but uh, he seemed to be like one of the big voices of the Black Arts Movement, like Nikki Giovanni and mm -hmm. people like that. Um, but he he has this thing where he or he was he has this quote i i'm i don't want to misquote it but he talks about how uh artists can't just uh separate themselves from the struggle like they can't just opine about the struggle they have to be active participants in the struggle uh you know baraka was a marxist he believed in revolution he espoused revolutionary beliefs in all of his work um uh, and he he felt that like it was the artist's onus as well um 
to 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 be revolutionaries, to be professional revolutionaries. So they can't just, you know, sit in their ivory towers and just, you know, talk about what other people are doing. They actually have to do it and participate in it in order to talk about it. So, like, <clears throat> I mean, you know, I, I totally, I you know, I totally feel that. And, you know, for, for me personally, it's interesting because that kind of feeling is is a lot of why, um, like, why I moved to the Bay Area, because mm -hmm. I felt like, um, um, you know, like, this is one of, I mean, New York definitely is like this, too. But this is one of the places, you know, at, at least in America, where you can, you can have that, that, I don't even want to call it a balance. I guess this like um, this duality of being an artist um, and being, you know, very politically active. And, and these two things can like can um, support each other. Right. Like I think mm -hmm. in a lot of ways um, and this is no, no shade to anybody who 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 is a who is an artist in L.A. But I feel like in a lot of times like the L.A. scene, it's actually kind of hard to do that sometimes because yeah. it's so aesthetic driven, you know. Yeah. Um, as a creative who 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 is an artist who is a creative but also you know so politically um um active how do you kind of um how do you how do you keep yourself like um like i guess just like mentally um okay and <laughs> um, healthy through this i mean i think that's an active journey that i'm, I'm currently on I'm not i don't have the answer to that uh because i don't think anyone's mentally okay right now but uh yeah, I mean, I just had a comrade in the signal thread be like, yo, how are you taking steps to take care of yourself? And I was just like, damn, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I actually am, uh, mm -hmm. but definitely that's, uh, we talk about like the activist toolkit is like, you have all your diversity of tactics, your experiences and stuff that you can draw on <clears throat> in order to better organize. And I think something that's lacking in a lot of activist toolkit is that like mental health preparedness. Um, mm -hmm. We, we see it all the time, like uh, Black Lives Matter activists having like some of the highest rates of suicide in our community, like like they just dropping like flies. A lot of them obviously been murdered by the state and like assassinated yeah. and covered up. But like a lot of them also are just super depressed because it's super depressing work. Um, but it's not all depressing. Like today, like I'm super happy because uh, we successfully you know, organize and we're going to save lives and like people who are living paycheck to paycheck can like breathe, can like, you know, not worry about like which, which vital necessity they have to give up this month in order to pay rent. Um, so I'm happy to have been able to be a part of, of a movement that alleviated some of that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's not, that's like, a, I can't just wait on wins because I mean, as organizers, we take more losses than wins, but like we're in it for the big wins. Um, not the, and the frequency of losses is kind of like it is, it can be uh, demoralizing and, and hard to take. So yeah, definitely. I, uh, I, I think every organizer should be uh, going to therapy or talking to their friends often. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's interesting though. I mean, I, I, I love what you're saying though about, you know, this idea of, not waiting for wins and, and you know experiencing a lot of losses because in a, in a lot of ways like you know being an artist is the same way right like hell yeah hell yeah know? and and so like what how do you kind of how do you kind of keep going through all that i mean you know like as, you, as an artist as an artist and as an organizer like both simultaneously like like uh, what what keeps you in it okay uh well okay what keeps me in it first off is just like i hate seeing my people die and like suffer and shit like that's just it's awful you know it's like when you see someone if you hear a story you see someone your loved one and they're just suffering or like just taking unending amounts of oppression daily like shit just gets to you like you eventually have to just ask yourself what can i do to make these people uh, better and more secure and like more self-determined and you know or, or have more self-determination i mean um that's first second i think we were talking about as an artist or even as a revolutionary like it's definitely important to create these like systems of self self-reinforcement like dual power shit and like mutual aid systems like you can create a system with as little as like three people to just mm. keep each other in check get each other's backs um you know, have solidarity with one another. If one, one of you falls on hardships, 
And, you know, as they mature, they grow bigger and they are able to shoulder so much more burden. Um, and so even your big problems can be solved by these mutual aid systems. Uh, also, like, as an artist, one thing the freedom arts movement has done is create a free press where we're publishing work. I mean, it's, it doesn't pay, which is like, I, you know, we're against the commodification, so a paying would be kind of weird. But, yeah. um, but uh, it does allow you to get your work out. And like we print things for free, we print chat books for free and we distribute them for free. Um, and so, you know, people who wouldn't normally be tapped into your work, get to see your work, like working class people who can't afford a fucking $40 chat book, they get your work. Um, and also yeah. like we don't pay, but not because we're trying to just like, like shrug you off or something. But what we do provide is all these other mutual aid systems. So like you're, you're not, you're not getting paid, but you're also, you're, you also don't have pay for uh like our mutual aid system you don't have to pay for the free school you don't have to pay for our food pantry you know all this stuff it's all these self-reinforcing systems so you're not left outside of like of or just like yeah you're just not left with needs that aren't being met we're trying to meet every single need for artists for working class people and just for every member of our community well, you know, well, one, I, I think that that's like amazing. I mean, you know, the, the, the interesting thing about all this, right, is is um, as even what you talked about, about like not paying. Right. There is this sort of um, this this strange like you talked about it with the commodification of art. There's this strange thing where it's like um, like like this idea of and I think this is changing. I think I think that this, you know, global pandemic is going to change a lot of this. But for a long Words. time, there was this idea of like, you know, make sure artists are paid, make sure artists are paid. And the mm -hmm. interesting thing about that is that actually impacted, um, I think, people who were doing like grassroots on the ground, like real art shit more than it actually impacted like a lot of the like larger art institutions. And the fucked up thing is that, that message was about the bigger institutions, like like places yeah. like Apple, right? Who were <laughs> doing like the today at Apple and not paying people, but then giving them free product, which is like, well, dude, you, you're not paying me and you're actually just getting rid of oh. shit that was going to sit around. So it's like, yeah. And you know, they're getting rich off of that. Yep. Because there's, there's, you know, yeah, we're not, I mean, the whole point of commodification is not only that you're not getting paid, but you're not seeing the profits that are exactly. gaining because of your work. Yep. It's like, yeah. So, I mean, that's what we don't want. And like, it's funny that you brought up the, like the calls uh, to pay these people directly. It's like all those people that uh, put up these, I mean, and I'm not knocking them because we're in desperate times and like people are just desperate. They're like, you know, making these spreadsheets of thousands of people and their Venmos and yeah. like, Oh, sent like, it's just like a lottery. It's like, it's a lottery of who gets to live and who gets to die. And it's, it sucks. And it's, and it's, it's like, yeah, that's obviously your first thought because that's what we're being conditioned to do is to be atomized and to be individualized, to give our Venmos out and not just give money directly to these mutual aid funds and, and these like mutual aid systems that already exist that are trying to build long lasting systems that can protect people. And it's like, you know, like you're going to get like, 20 bucks in your Venmo is that better than giving $200 to a mutual aid system that can that can support you on a on a regular basis? It's like yeah. no, fuck no. Uh, but it's just it's just a part of the thinking and it's just a part of this like marketize yourself and I, I remember it is like I was looking at one of the the spreadsheets for all the Venmos and it was like a description box and everyone was just doing the most with like trying to describe how oppressed they were. And it's just so sick. It was just like, fuck, like I feel you and you're probably really oppressed, but like, man, like you're, you're being forced to sell yourself, yeah. uh, sell your oppression in order to survive. And it's like, fuck dude. No. It's and that's see, like, yeah, no. And that's the thing that I think is, is going to change so much. I mean, um, you know, like I was the, you know, the other day I was having a conversation with my partner and I was like, you know, like, like, like this, even this idea, I think of like, of of like buying art selling art like these things are, like this is not even how this is not how creativity always was and yep, uh, and yep. this is the time when people like stop doing that and they take a step back and you're like 
oh yeah, like this time last year, I was hot shit, a blue chip artist, and now nobody's buying shit, right? And yeah. like after a while, like I think it is stuff like what you're doing, like 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 providing like free content, providing free resources that's gonna be able to turn and like this is when people need like yeah. Are like the most right like, like yeah. even the poem you just read like when you talk about chat books when you talk about these things like this is the time like when people can't go outside when people are hurting and they need answers this is the time yeah. when like that art is most important and when you start putting up like any sort of like like you said like people shouldn't be able to i mean people shouldn't have to choose between like yo am i gonna eat today or am i gonna experience art you know, or am like, I gonna? Yeah, or it's like, am I gonna eat today, or am I gonna get to buy another canvas if I can make art? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's crazy. No, it's so real. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, like just to piggyback off what you're saying is like, art as a profession is just completely contingent on class and privilege. It's like, and not yeah. to say like privilege in the sense of like, oh, like white people, but like privilege in the sense of like some people are allowed opportunities and some people aren't. Poor people are sometimes cherry picked by like a rich philanthropist and like, oh, I see something in you. Whatever it is oh, that no. day he sees, whether it's his white guilt and a reflection of himself or whatever. But like, you know, some people get access to these institutions. All rich people have access to these institutions. Um, mm. And some people don't. And it's like, you know, we shouldn't uh, mystify the, the class of artists uh, as anything other than a, than a privilege. And like, we what we are trying to do at fam is like obviously abolish all systems and all divides and all 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 barriers that uh, uh like all class barriers that uh are allowing uh art to be a specialized thing and not just something that everyone can do everyone should do and everyone everyone needs in their lives totally it's it's uh no that's so powerful that like even just thinking about this it reminds me like i um like it was a couple years ago and, um, you know, I was having a conversation with someone and it was in that conversation that like I learned and realized that like pretty much like every major and, and this goes to what you were saying about about privilege, like even for for black artists. Right. Like almost every major black artist right now, what we'll call like mainstream major, you know, show and like biennials, all this shit. They, they, they all went to Yale. And I was like, yeah. wait, and then it's you start crazy. looking and you're like, oh shit, like, <clears throat> like this is true. And it's like that, yeah. that in itself says, says so, so much, you know? Yeah. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean they're like bad people or mm -hmm. like they come from extreme wealth, but they probably have a shit ton of debt. <laughs> like, yeah. yo, you, you have to, you have to, in order to engage in this system or join the institution of art, of art making, you literally have to, to either be ex extraordinarily rich or uh, accept a social contract that says you're probably going to be in debt for a really long time. Yeah. Um, and it's fucking crazy. It shouldn't be like that. But like, so uh, uh, I'll link the ideological points of unity and like, kind of like our manifesto later, but, um, uh, but yeah, so, so, so the, it's not only an institutional barrier, but it's also like an ideological barrier for a lot of people to break, which is again, something that fam's trying to do. Like we're trying to push that, like, yo, you have, a creative consciousness inside of you it's just being uh uh dominated suppressed and repressed by capitalism it's like that's it's the truth it's like that is the fucking truth yeah dude it's so interesting because um this is something that i've i've dealt with a lot um just as i've especially as I, i'm getting older and I'm like, um and just thinking about things and looking at my own life like my um you know like my my family is like is like very creative like like just everyone in my family in like all these different ways and but i think i'm probably the first person that in my family you know that that i know from my grandparents on down that actively calls themselves an artist but like mm. i'm inspired by them and sure. I, w I would love to know if 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 you have a similar kind of um kind of feeling with that you know like you talked about your 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 you know like your your parents having you know like like panthers and and you know people who are like political activists like on the mantle and stuff like that but not right. necessarily like identifying like that themselves like um how how yeah. is this sort of like experience for you? Um, yeah, no, definitely not parents. Parent singular. My dad is definitely a square and is not not about the <laughs> panther. But uh, 
my mom, they separated and my mom was a, a more free spirit than he was. He doesn't, I don't think he has like a real creative bone in his body, but my mom was, was a creative one. She used to draw like a cartoons for Hallmark cards. Wow. Um, she did that for like a spell, but she, she like could never hold a job because her, she was just like, I would say it was because of her creativity, but yeah, doctors would say something else, but, um, yeah, no. So I don't know. I, I, I think she never called herself an artist, even though she played the violin, she was like, which was weird. I like, I found out about that super late in life. I was like, what you fucking play the violin. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, she like drew, she, she was a great writer, but she never called herself an artist. Um, I don't know. Or maybe I just don't remember her calling herself an artist. No, but I but think I that know. that's, yeah, I think that that's so strange though, you know, especially when you take people like us, it's like, this is so much of who we are. And, and I think like, it, yeah. it's people like that who, who, who have bought this out of us, right? Like what you said, like someone makes you feel like you can take on that identity, you know? Exactly. I just think that's so interesting. Like these people were, were in the, you know, whatever we want to call it, but they were in the struggle so much they they couldn't even see that like they were they're brilliant like you are, you're an artist yeah. more so than anyone else yeah i mean exactly it's because it's it's the struggle but like naming what parts of the struggle it is it's like those barriers that didn't people to even identify as as with something because they think you know they're not worthy of it yeah because yep. of so many different factors you know it's mostly financial a lot of it's cultural like you know when you when you think about artists i mean i guess neoliberal representation culture has kind of changed this but like before in our, in our parents generation when they looked at artists they were all white and they were all men they were yeah. all you know european and it's like it, it, the pantheon of artists is barely shifting like i remember this article in some some fucking art rag or whatever the super fancy ones it was like black art is finally having its moment i was just like <laughs> yeah. i was floored i was just like what i was like so so I mean, A, we created art. Africa created art, so shut the fuck up. But yeah, also, yeah. like, how, how, have you, how have you just ig blanketly ignored the history of black art? Even if we're just talking about American art, black art in America is and its, and its influence on everything else. It's, yep. it's, just, it's, it's, it's not only us that, or like our parents' generation, that was disallowed from seeing ourselves as artists, but it's also just like white people and the institution itself is has built-in blinders <laughs> no it's so oh wow i'm i'm just uh, it's so interesting you say that because um so there's a few articles like this right this is this is a a style of article that was like every fucking where last year and um and in san francisco there's this uh critic whose name is charles demaray and um uh for for this museum that that I, i've worked with in different ways they um <laughs> he actually you know reached out to us for for quotes in this article and it was just so like I don't know, just just so weird to have this <laughs> lens push because like what what that means to them is exactly what you just talked about. And it's all about the art market. Right. And yeah. It's, it's who's, fucking who's, crazy. Like this art, is what it takes. Continue, sorry. No, please, please. I was gonna say, yeah, no, exactly what you're saying. Like who's marketable now? It's like that's just what like identity politics has done for neoliberalism. It's like I, I wrote a piece a while ago about uh, Black Ariel, the mermaid. Yeah, they made they made a Black Ariel. I'm like Ariel's just wearing blackface. Like you guys realize <laughs> that Ariel is not a black person. It is a white subject. It was written as a white person. It's just wearing blackface because they want to sell it to you. <laughs> they want to sell it to <laughs> black people. It's like they're not giving you anything. They're taking your money. <sighs> It's so real. And then you start getting into when you look at shit like that, then you're like, but like, were any were any black creatives involved with this? Were they consulted at all? And it's always like, nah. It's so yeah, fucking or, weird. Or if it is, they're just like, you know, the what's that girl's name that wrote that fucking Bonnie and Clyde black the black Bonnie and Clyde? <laughs> oh yeah. What's, what's, what's her name? What? Yeah, what's that? Was it Queen and Slim? Is that the movie you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, exactly. Like, like even if it is black people consulted, it's those kinds of black people. It's like, oh yeah, the black yeah. people who who just want to 
get a check. It's like, for, for sure, I'll sell my people out to get a check. Hell yeah. <laughs> Fact. Facts. No, nah, this is so real. Well, um, well, thank you. I mean, like, look, this, this has been such, such an amazing um, conversation yeah, we, that we ha- we had. What I want to start doing is, especially, I, I, I think that, like, um, I hope this isn't the last time we can do this. I, every, like, every time now that we really want to get into something, like, political about people and, like, you know, like, I, now, like, you know, I, I've been keeping up and, like, reading the things you've done. And, you know, like, I hope that um, in the future we can, like, connect and, like, you know, chat about like pieces that you're writing and, and like when things come out like this has been super fun for me so so thank you for doing that. hell yeah i would also love to get other members and other artists from our collective that'd be dope that'd be amazing i would i would i'm i'm super down like these hell these yeah. are the conversations that like i've been um i've been wanting to have uh one of the things that i i love and i this is gonna i just want to like end kind of like talking about this too one of the things i love um that you're doing with like especially like the uh the freedom arts movement uh instagram page um is i love the way that you you all are like kind of like presenting things and like um just just the way that you're pushing out your message and can you just kind of talk about a little bit like the ways that like like y'all are also using things like social media and just, like, like, just the internet in general to kind of uh, push out what you do. Word. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting too, in the context of uh, the coronavirus and quarantine, it's like quarantine, quarantine, quarantine. I love that video. Um, <laughs> sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> Fucking Tory Lanez. Tory Lanez is in my head. Um, uh, fuck. What was I saying? No, you oh, yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Coronavirus, yeah, okay. Coronavirus and quarantine uh, has kind of just like forced a lot of like the Luddite uh, and like older generation that's not too familiar with uh, social media and stuff mm-hmm. uh, has forced those organizers to like g- gain a broader access to that tool in their toolkit. Um, mm-hmm. And we've had to come up with so many different creative ways to like host meetings, like because we can't literally organize outside, so we have to figure out a way to organize. And get the message to the people. So uh, one of the things we're doing, we're hosting a reading and an interview with uh, the revolutionary poet. Tom. Super dope dude. Uh, he's like an abolitionist. He, he's taught in Rikers Island prison, stuff like that. Organizer, just all around really, really cool person. Um, so we're doing, we're doing that on Saturday at 3 p.m., I think, Eastern time. Okay. Uh, so we'll be talking about, you know, our group. Uh, how he sees the uh, art playing its role in the revolution. He's going to do some crazy ass reading like he always does. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, just, just plug in to our social medias, uh, join our mailing list on our website and uh, yeah. Power to the people. Dope. Dope. And I, I love Tongo. I love Tongo. Shay. He, he's so dope. The, the way he, this his stream of consciousness poems, the whole thing is dope. So yeah, um, he, I'm he excited. does not let you, he does not let you recover. He does not. And I'm, I'm going to um, I'm, I'm going to be tapped into that. So so good luck with that. Um, can you tell people like like where to find y'all all the different platforms and just Word. how they can stay connected with with everything that you're doing? Word. So Freedom Arts Movement, uh, obviously all one word on Instagram. Freedom Arts Movement, M-V-M-T, the spelling of movement on Twitter. Uh, FreedomArtsMovement.com. Uh, freedomartspress.com uh yeah sign it into our mailing list on our site uh we'll do we're doing virtual meetings at this point uh but when it starts letting up and people get to go outside we'll be hosting weekly meetings in bed so yeah Dope, dope. Well, good luck with everything. I'm, I'm super excited for you. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, I'm, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm definitely someone who, who definitely tends to believe in conspiracy theories. So I'm, I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm a little bit, I'm not worried for y'all, but I will say, I got, I got straps, bro. Great. Okay. Perfect. Cause stay safe. Cause fam, like y'all have to do this digitally, and you know, yeah. dude, there's powerful motherfuckers that don't want you to be doing yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, so, we're 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 actually organizing community self defense too. So, nice. we got this. Okay, okay. You know what? I'm I, I I'm sure you got it covered. You know, yeah. so I'm I'm glad to hear that. And um and thank you for being here today. And and I, I hope we can chat again soon. Word, peace, G. All right, peace, fam. <laughs>